Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Okay, guys, language of pharmacology. Well, you know, everything in medicine sort of has its own sort of lingo, right? And little things that you can pick up on as EMS providers, EMTs and paramedics, knowing some of the language of different areas of medicine like pharmacology, since it really is a a uh, specialized branch of medicine, it's good to know some important phrases and some things that you should really be familiar with uh, as a paramedic or as an EMT. So let's just go over some of the terminology, guys. This is pretty basic. Uh, some of the stuff you might know, some of it might be a little bit of a refresher for you, but I think it, all of it can really apply, and you can probably apply this every day in EMS just by looking at a patient's medication, okay? So things like indication for use, right? So this is, of course, the reasons why a certain drug would be administered to a patient. And you're thinking about the patient's history, uh, maybe an ongoing problem, whether it's acute or a chronic problem. And what about contraindications? We hear this a lot, right, in EMS. It's a contraindication for mass pants, for um, oxygen, for nitroglycerin, for uh, all the different types of uh, things that we can give or things we should consider giving in EMS, right? So we know about contraindications, but what these really are are the for the use of a medicine, right? So the reasons why a certain drug should not be administered to a specific patient for whatever reason, okay? Um, maybe a clinical problem that they have, maybe it's a history that they have, maybe it's another medication that they're on. So all these could be contraindications why we would not want to give a specific drug to a patient. And what about therapeutic effects? Well, these are either the positive or a desirable effect that you should really expect to occur when you give a drug to a patient. And what about side effects? Now, this is something we can see, and it's a little bit different than, let's say, allergies, right? But side effects are really the predictable effects of a drug, okay? These are the, the sort of effects you're going to see that are not really part of that desired effect we talked about, the, that therapeutic effect. The side effects are the predictable effects of the drug that are not part of that therapeutic effect. Okay, hope that makes sense. And then, of course, we have the allergies. A little bit different than the side effects, but these are really that sensitivity to a drug. Okay, and these are sensitivities that can result in an undesirable and even a uh, even a potentially like severe uh, immune response, right? That 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 um, anaphylactic response with the administration of sp specific drugs. Now, the next thing is half life. You hear this a lot, and what what this is is really the amount of time it takes for half of a drug to be actually metabolized or excreted by the body, okay? So that's the amount of time it takes for half of, of a drug to be metabolized or excreted by the body. That's the sort of the, the official sort of uh, take on what a half-life is. And now dosage. Now, this is really the amount of the drug that's delivered to the patient, okay? Pretty simple, right? But we have to think about how it's stated, how drugs, how dosages are stated, usually in grams or portions of a gram, and we usually see things like milligrams, right, or even micrograms. And what this winds up happening is this is the actual weight of the drug, and for each drug is the total allowable amount that you can actually give to a patient within a certain time frame, and this amount is it's weight dependent. This is why we go by what the weight of the drug is, okay for each individual drug and based upon either patient's weight or the, the drug itself. So let's say uh, something like um, lidocaine, okay, you talk about three milligrams per kilogram is usually the maximum amount you're going to give of this drug to a patient in the bolus form um, with any, let's say, one hour, okay? That's like what what a dosage would be for uh, something like lidocaine. You have all different variations of that, but that's just a, a little quick example that you should be familiar with, okay? Um, route of administration. Well, this is, of course, the method that we're giving drugs, right? And what do we usually do? Oral, something like aspirin, nitroglycerin, um, inhalation, like, you know, maybe albuterol, topical, maybe uh, like a nitro paste, something like that, or even an injection, IM, um, 
IV, and even nowadays we give things intranasally as well, okay? Um, in a lot of drugs, and especially in a lot of patients, like cardiac patients, certain drugs that we can give IV, and we want to do that because that makes the drug get to the patient a little more quickly. So in cardiac care, if you think about it, just an example here, time is muscle, right? So heart muscle is what we're really talking about. So we don't want to go ahead and you know kind of let the patients suffer or their heart have more damage because we give them a pill and that pill might take maybe half an hour 45 minutes or whatever to sort of kick in uh and start giving patients relief so and we got to think about routes of administration as far as how it's going to affect the patient and what's going to be best for the patient sometimes an oral dosage might be what we want to do other times it might be something inhalation or sometimes it might be more aptly for us in ems is usually iv im uh intranasally things like that Okay, so we want to think about that route of administration when we do it. And when you're looking at drugs in EMS, uh, you see the different routes that we give and think about why you're giving drugs a certain certain way. And that can even help you sort of figure out what to expect when you're giving these drugs, the rapidness of uh, the drug's effects on, on a patient, depending upon how you're giving it. Okay, now, last three things, guys, here real quick on this language of pharmacology, uh, Monday Minutes. Uh, our favorite little things here, right? These tropics, right? The onotropic, chronotropic, and dromotopic. Now, these are things, guys, we'll see a lot of these on exams, right? So I'm going to break these down real quick in an effort, hopefully, that you'll be able to sort of maybe refer back to this video uh, and uh, kind of refresh your memory on these things uh, just before an exam. It can really help you because these, are, to me, are the type of questions you see on exam that are sort of like throwaway question that is a good way to make sure you get that five points because it's pretty easy to remember these things if you think about what each does. So inotropic, this is going to pertain to the strength in which the heart is contracting. So if a drug is, is said to have a positive inotropic effect, it makes the heart beat stronger, okay? And of course, a negative is going to make the heart beat a little less stronger, right? So now chronotropic, this is pertains to the rate or the speed of the heart, okay? So if a drug has a positive chronotropic effect, it's going to make the heart rate speed up, okay? Say something like um, uh, atropine, right? That's going to make the heart speed up, right? Epinephrine is going to make the heart speed up, okay? Um, a negative chronotrope does the opposite, of course. It's going to slow down the heart, okay? So think about that. Chronotropic is on the rate, inotropic is on the strength, okay? Um, and then finally, dromotropic. Well, this is the conduction of electricity. And sometimes we don't always see this in EMS, so we might not really apply this, but just something to sort of remember, something to sort of take away, is think about the dromotropic, and this is pertaining to the conduction of electricity. And this is a positive dromotrope was going to improve the conduction of electricity through the cardiac mus musculature. Okay, so guys, those three little quick tips there on the inotropic, chronotropic, and dromotropic. Okay, uh, take that away, guys, because those are things you're going to see on exams or the things that you're going to have to think about, especially when you give a drug that you're expecting to have, let's say, a positive effect on a patient as far as, let's say, their heart rate or even the strength of contraction, um, what to look for and what you can actually expect to see. So even though, you know, a lot of the things we do in EMS, uh, you know, are, are based on an emergent factor, you know, we have cardiac patients that are in cardiac arrest and things like that. But think about the drugs we're giving, guys. Think about the dosages, the routes of administration. Think about these these uh, inotropic, chronotropic effects you, you, should ex you can expect to see. And this is going to help you when you administer these drugs or a patient is on a specific drug, okay, what you should watch out for after they've been giving or after a patient's been on these drugs for a specific length of time. So, guys, I hope you can use these Monday Minutes. I know uh, pretty basic stuff here, but I think it's a great way to sort of refresh in little small chunks like this to really help you uh, retain this information and not really memorize it. You know, to me, memorization is great for exams or it's great for sort of regurgitating things um, on, on skills testing, but to really understand what these 
all are, and more importantly, to understand them and to sort of apply them in our everyday EMS field activities, guys. So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes. Um, please go to emsofficehours.com, guys. Check out previous Monday Minutes there, some of the podcasts there as well. Be sure to leave me your feedback. Let me know what you think about these quick podcasts. Let me know what type of Monday Minutes you'd like to hear about. And I'll go ahead and even create a Monday Minute or even a podcast based on perhaps one of your suggestions. So I do these for you guys. I want to hear what you want to hear, and I want to know what you your concerns are in EMS and what you want to hear about and what you want clarification on or maybe even you want to bring to the discussion table, guys. So that's it for this week, guys. Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. And as always, stay safe. <laughs>